Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Ister Gray. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Today's episode is a special one as at the end of the video, I will finally be unveiling a project that I've been working on on and off now for quite some time. So be sure to stay tuned for that. First up, I wanna to touch on this exclusive report from the information about some of the injuries at Giga Texas. This article is written by Becky Peterson. Looking at her LinkedIn page previously, she worked at Business Insider as a reporter, a source that we know has not been that favorable toward Tesla over the years to say the least. She says that she covers Tesla, but I went and checked. The last article she wrote about Tesla was six months ago, and it was when a Tesla executive left for Rivian. And when Elon said he wanted to approve all hiring, she framed it as Tesla's chief micromanager is back. So let's keep all of that in the back of our mind, but here's what she said. Nine current and former Giga Texas employees said Tesla cut corners on construction, maintenance, and operations in ways that put workers in dangerous situations that other comparable places they've worked wouldn't have tolerated. It's actually a pretty long article that covers many different instances of injuries, but just one for example, she talked about an explosion at Giga Texas in the casting area that threw workers to the ground and caused one concussion. But here's the summary of the article. Nearly one out of every 21 workers at the Austin factory got hurt on the job in 2022. This, according to an analysis by the information of annual injury reports that Tesla files with OSHA. By comparison, the median injury rate in 2022 among auto manufacturing plants with over 250 employees was one in every 30 workers. She added, according to OSHA filings, that at Fremont, one out of every 12 workers was injured in 2022. This was interesting at Giga Texas, OSHA inspected Tesla one time in 2021 and one time in 2022 for safety issues. Compare that with Fremont, where we have OSHA inspecting that factory nine times in 2021 and nine times in 2022, and then four times already so far this year. And this small anecdote was a great reminder of what it actually takes from a day-to-day -day standpoint for Tesla to do what it's doing. Robots spray the large machine for the Gigapress with lubricant every 90 seconds to prevent the cast parts from sticking to the molds. The lubricant causes a thick haze that workers say makes it hard to breathe and eventually Tesla had to knock out a large window in the castings area to provide better ventilation. Overall, it's unfortunately true that with Tesla always looking to move as fast as possible, they'll undoubtedly cut some corners and do things unconventionally that maybe other companies would not do. Manufacturing, especially in automotive, just inherently does carry some risk with it. And of course, all injuries are are unfortunate, but if we've learned anything over the years, it's that we can be pretty confident Tesla will be working to get these numbers as close to zero as possible. But a relatively new factory with new employees with plenty of new groundbreaking manufacturing techniques, again, undoubtedly is going to have some injuries along the way. We got some data on the European Union from the ACEA, and through the first 10 months of this year, new car registrations for the overall market were up 16.7%. Year-to-date for full BEVs, the market share now stands at 14% across the entire EU, surpassing diesel's cumulative share for the first time. The petrol share is at 33.4% and hybrids making up 28.6%. Let's have a look at the new car registrations by manufacturer year-to-date comparing this year to last year in terms of overall auto market share. We'll just focus on the main players. VW's market share down 0.2%. Stellantis market share down 1.9%. Hyundai's market share down 1%. Toyota's market share down 0.3%. BMW's down 0.1%. Mercedes down 0.3%, Ford down 0.7%, Honda down 0.2%, and here we have Tesla up 1.3%, effectively doubling its market share from 1.2% in 2022 to 2.5% year to date this year. And if we take a look at unit growth year over year for the same time frame, you can see when scrolling down, Tesla is the only automaker to have grown unit growth over 100%. 132.5% to be specific. And yes, I know Tesla is growing from a relatively small base, but so are other companies 
on this list. For context, the second fastest growing brand on this entire list was Alfa Romeo, growing unit deliveries 72.6% year over year. Analysts or detractors sometimes love to pick very specific markets or even quarters, but if we zoom out year to date and look at the entirety of the EU, the picture is pretty clear. Tesla is growing its market share very quickly and most of the major automakers are actually losing market share themselves. Plain and simple, Tesla is the fastest growing brand of them all, doubling its market share of the overall auto market year over year. This might be the first and only time I can make a statement like this. If you drive a car, you really should own this product. True story, within one day of having this product, I had two family members ask me where I got it, so you know exactly what they're getting for Christmas. The last time Ashley and I drove to Florida, within three hours of leaving the house, this happened. <laughs> From this moment on, I set out to bulletproof our future road trips. It led to me finding the Fantic X8 Apex portable tire inflator that doubles as a power bank and a flashlight. Hypothetical situation. Late at night, you're not by any gas station, you're in the middle of nowhere, you have a flat tire, low tire pressure sign comes on, what do you do? Well, if you have this, all you have to do screw it on and then instantly it'll digitally tell you exactly what the tire pressure is. You can change the setting, whatever you want to set it to exactly. There are also custom presets if you want. Then you just hit the power button, you can set it down and it'll automatically fill up your tire to whatever you set the PSI to. It can pump continuously for over 40 minutes and is easily recharged by USB-C. As you can see here, it inflates one PSI in roughly 10 seconds. So you could go from 25 to 33 PSI in less than a minute and a half. They also have the V8 Mate cordless car vacuum, Ashley loves the beach, but she hates sand anywhere but on the beach. So this has been great to avoid unnecessary trips to a gas station that may or may not have a vacuum. It does come with multiple attachments and has a low and a high gear. I was able to get everybody here 30% off these Fantic products and the discount codes will be in the description below. And you can buy these right on Amazon. So thanks to Fantic and thanks to all of you for supporting the channel. What do we always say about the YouTube utility and the commercial space for battery storage, it all boils down to the economics and the financial incentives. Neowen and Tesla have been working together since they built the Tesla Big Battery in South Australia back in 2017. Over the summer, Neowen put out an announcement saying they were expecting much higher operating earnings in fiscal year 2025, but they didn't say exactly why. We just knew part of it was going to be their Kali battery project that could grow up to four gigawatt hours, which is massive. As it turns out, yesterday we finally found out why. It's been revealed how much money these batteries will be paid to soak up solar in the middle of the day when demand is low and inject it back into the grid in the evening when demand is high. This is what people refer to as the solar duck. Speaking of that Kali battery project, it is going to use Tesla Megapack technology. It'll get paid over $7,500 for every 30 minutes for the middle of the day and over $30,000 dollars every half hour for being available in the evening. The total, this would equate to around $304,000 per day. This new contract for this project to operate like this is set for two years and doing the math that would be a hundred million dollars every year. A wise person once told me to make the most money you have to solve the biggest problems and the Tesla Mega Pack is doing exactly that. So as Neoen and other companies continue having success with projects like this, the total addressable market for these projects is only going to grow. Just so you know, the Cybertruck is showing up to other locations across the country. This time around, we have it in New York City. Here's the exact location for any of you New Yorkers. This refrain right here has been incredibly common. The Cybertruck is even more impressive in person. We also got some professional looking photos of the Cybertruck, which I believe came from Weibo. Here we have a nice interior shot with the updated user interface, and you can see on the Cybertruck wheel, you have the logo right in the center. Zooming in, it's pretty tough to tell, but it looks like the tire pressure 
pressure sits around 55 psi. Here we have another shot of the UI with a button to fold the mirrors. Scrolling down, you see an easy way to adjust the suspension, low, high, or entry. The perforated seats have been confirmed. And in the front, you have the Cybertruck word mark on that panel that appears to be removable. And this thing over here, honestly, it's really tough to tell what this is, but let me know what you guys think. Nine more days. The government of Indonesia is trying to convince everyone that Tesla is still indeed planning on investment in the country. The Ministry for Investment Affairs denied claims Tesla withdrew its investment plan in Indonesia. They clarified saying Tesla's investment was only being postponed. The plan is ongoing, but with the current global economic conditions, I believe Elon is putting investment on hold. Eventually, it seems very likely Tesla will strike a deal with Indonesia when it comes to nickel supply at the very least it may just be another six to twelve months before we hear anything of the sort on the other hand though when it comes to tesla in india the drumbeat keeps getting louder we have india closing in on an agreement with tesla that would allow tesla to ship its cars into the country starting next year and tesla would set up a factory within two years an announcement could come as soon as january and the locations being considered are gujarat maharashtra and tamil nadu Tesla would commit an initial minimum investment in any plant of around $2 billion, and they would look to increase purchases of auto parts from the nation to as much as $15 billion. Now, that's a staggering amount considering that last year, Tesla sourced about $1 billion in components from the nation. And this year in India, Tesla is on track to nearly double that to $1.9 billion. So going up to $15 billion would be over a 7x in terms of auto part sourcing. Tesla would also seek to make some batteries in India to bring down the cost. As always though, no final decision has been made and the plans could change. With this one, I often hear the argument, well, EVs only made up about 1.5% of car sales in India in 2022 but we have to remember this is all about the future as India's middle class is growing very quickly. The last time we talked about this, we heard that India wasn't keen on Tesla importing cars from Giga Shanghai, so they'd most likely have to come from Giga Berlin. And again, they're saying India is now said to be considering lowering import taxes for international EV manufacturers for a period of five years if those firms eventually commit to setting up local factories. There's that sunset provision that we talked about. And they said when its first locally made cars do go on sale, they could retail for as little as $20,000 the next gen platform. A possible scenario, next year, Tesla starts importing some of the sexy lineup with lower import tariffs. Then within two years, they build a factory to make the next gen vehicle in India. And presumably Giga Shanghai would start exporting megapacks to India as the solar and battery storage market in India is massive. Tesla sent a message to some owners through the mobile app saying they were going to start replacing some of the idle fees at superchargers with congestion fees in the coming weeks. These congestion fees are only going to apply at supercharger sites when they're busy, but at least right now we don't know exactly how Tesla is going to define that. You would hope and assume that it'll only be when all of the other dispensers are actually full. But for now, we don't know for sure when these fees will apply. When they do apply though, the congestion fee will only be when charging over 90% state of charge. The fee itself will be $1 per minute and it will have the same grace period as the idle fees used to to have of five minutes. Tesla said this fee encourages drivers to charge only as much as needed for their trip rather than all the way to 100%. So whether this is for the busy holiday season or this is going to be a more permanent measure as we bring in more non-Teslas into the supercharger network, this is what we're looking at. Ford has told us they were planning to scale back their $12 billion of EV investments in the coming years and we get some more clarity on that today. Ford is scaling back plans for that $3.5 billion battery investment with CATL in Michigan. They said they're cutting production capacity by 43% down to 20 gigawatt hours per year and reducing the expected employment from 2,500 down to 1,700 jobs. This will still be a $2 billion investment over time. Ford's communications officer said, we looked at all the factors. Those included demand and the expected growth for EVs, our business plans, our product cycle plans, the affordability and business to make sure we can make a sustainable business out of 
this plan. After assessing all of that, we're now good to confirm we're moving forward with the plant, albeit in a slightly smaller size and scope than we originally announced. The plant is still expected to open in 2026. Don't forget, this was supposed to be the first factory in the United States actually producing LFP cells. Speaking of, Stellantis and CATL have now signed their own memorandum of understanding for CATL to provide battery cells and modules for Stellantis's EV production in Europe. They're also considering forming a joint venture to fully support Stellantis's aggressive electrification plans. No word yet on the size or timing. The Tesla China weekly insurance number came in at 16.3 thousand. Plugging that data in, if you wanted to compare it to the same week in quarter three, that number was 13.9 thousand. So through the first seven weeks of quarter three, we were at 72.2 thousand, over the same time period in quarter four, still just shy at 70.4 thousand. But this is certainly a strong result, much more in line with what I was personally expecting to see for last week and into the next few weeks. We also had Tesla China raise the price for the fourth consecutive week of at least one of the variants. This time around, it was for the Model Y long range, raising it roughly 300 US dollars. Starting November 28th, Tesla, Apple, and some other US companies will be among the 515 exhibitors at the inaugural China International Supply Chain Expo. A Chinese Trade Council chairman said, we hope US companies will be deeply involved in the expo, actively promoting the advancement of healthy development of China-US ties. China clearly still pushing for more foreign investment. RJ Scringe will now be taking on an expanded role overseeing all product-related functions, so employees in areas like software, autonomy, and design will now report directly to RJ. Nick Kalasian, who previously served in this role, is stepping back from his role while retaining some responsibilities around propulsion and vehicle tech. He said, my desire to make changes aligns perfectly with RJ's desire to redirect more of his time and energy toward product leadership. And the industry turnover continues as we have Fisker losing its second chief accounting officer in less than one month. For you Canadians in the Powerwall, you still cannot order a Powerwall directly through the Tesla website, but now at least they're showing Canadians pricing on the website, although you still have to go through a third party. Small, but a step in the right direction. There's been a fair amount of chatter over the past week about Andre Carpathy maybe coming back to Tesla. It's pure speculation. It is true though that Andre was a co-founder of OpenAI and served as a research assistant for some years. Now that that company is effectively imploded, who knows what the future will hold for Andre. Something to keep an eye on. All right, guys, here it is, one of the projects I've been working on. I hope that you all enjoy it. On and off for the past year, really, this is one project I've been working on. It's been an incredible few years with Electrified, and it's been a pleasure getting to know some of you. When I stop and think about our common interests, whether it's being a fan of Elon, an owner of Tesla stock, a lover of technology, manufacturing or innovation, an owner of a Tesla product, someone who desires a cleaner, sustainable future, or some combination of those, it's hard not to be grateful for the story we all get to watch unfold. I'm thankful every single day for every one of you that makes this community what it is, and I wanted us all to have a way to outwardly express our our shared interests and really our shared mission. My hope is that these products serve as conversation starters so we all have easy ways to share the real Tesla story. And look, it's true, most creator stores are not great. The quality is subpar and you end up not wearing whatever you buy. I went back and forth with different suppliers for months, actually wearing, washing, testing, and redesigning everything. I have to say, the process was worth it and I find myself wearing or using these products all the time. I will roll out new products periodically as things happen in the Teslaverse and we know Elon gives us quotable moments pretty often. For now, we're only shipping to the United States, but in time, we do plan to expand that more globally. You can find the store at electrified.shop and it'll always be in the descriptions below. But whether you ever grab something or not, I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you who has been a part of Electrified. I am forever grateful for this season and I'm excited to keep watching this transition to a cleaner, better, more enjoyable future with all of you. 
Cheers. Don't forget, check out those Fantic products linked below. Take advantage of the discount. I'm telling you right now, that portable tire inflator is clutch. One more video for me this week, tomorrow on Wednesday, but then I will be off Thursday and Friday to return next Monday. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video. If you did, you can find me on X linked below and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.